Hi, I'm John Hinchy, and this is the second video looking at Dorico from the perspective of those of us who know Sibelius very well. In this video, we'll be looking into the equivalents for using these programs in a more efficient manner. The way to speed up your workflow in any program is not to point and click and pull menus for everything you need to accomplish. The way to achieve this in Sibelius is through the use of built-in and custom keyboard shortcuts. In Dorico, these are called key commands, but in practice, it's the same thing. There are some key commands that are universal in computer use. For example, Command S for Save, Command X for Cut. Dorico follows the industry standard and keeps the universal key commands for things like Copy, Paste, Undo, etc. In any notation program, the most basic of key commands is how to define where you want to start inputting notes or using step input. In Sibelius, you select a bar and type N for new note. To define the note or rest duration, in Sibelius you go to the keypad. You then press a note on your MIDI controller or letter on your computer keyboard, and a note of the desired pitch and value appears. Let's look at this in Dorico. We just need to make some shifts in keyboard and screen geography, but after that, you'll see it's a very similar process. In Dorico, you select the bar and use N, but with a modifier key, in this case, Shift. So Shift N. And you get the same result as in Sibelius, an active cursor, and you are all set to add notes or rests. We start in write mode, and for demonstration purposes, open the left zone so you can see the durations, accidentals, and basic articulations. Here's the first change in geography. Let's move from the numbers on the number pad to the numbers at the top of the computer keyboard. Think of the quarter note as the center of durations. In Dorico, it's assigned to six on the number keys. On the keypad in Sibelius, a quarter note is four. In both programs, all durations proceed up or down from there. In Dorico, a half note is 7, an eighth note is 5, etc. This is a change from Sibelius, but once you shift your thinking over by two numbers, you'll get the hang of it. As you're learning your way around Dorico, during note input, keep the left zone open. When you want to change the note values, hover over that note value in the left zone. You'll see, for example, a 16th note or semiquaver is 4. Now you could click on the note value and change it, but instead now press 4 at the top of your keyboard. Do this a few times, and before you know it, you'll have it committed to memory. The items in the first keypad layout in Sibelius can all be found in the left zone of Dorico. This is another place where we just have to change the geography or screen location in our mind. Be aware that if you start the bar with a rest, you'll look at the screen and think nothing has happened. Fear not, as you start to input notes in the bar, it all gets worked out. That's the Dorico way. Getting out of step input mode is similar to Sibelius. In Sibelius, it's a double tap on the escape key. In Dorico, it's one tap, but if muscle memory makes you double tap, no harm done. If you are really hardwired to the keypad, all the numbers on the keypad mirror the actions of the number keys across the top row of your computer keyboard. So in Dorico, press 6 on the keypad or the top row of your keyboard and you will get a quarter note. There are seven letters that are universally problematic for key commands because they are at the core of music nomenclature. These are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G for obvious reasons. That is why in Sibelius, you can select a bar and type K for key signature. For clef, one would assume you type C, but if you do that, you get the note C. The designers of Dorico figured out a different way to get around this, the concept of popovers. Popovers allow you to access many of the notation tools and elements with a quick keystroke and then typing in what you need. All popovers start with holding down the shift key and then typing a letter. This allows you to call upon bar lines with shift B, clefts with shift C, and dynamics with shift D. What will help you learn the popovers is printing out and referring to the Dorico quick reference card and the list of popovers in Dorico PDFs. Links to those PDFs are below in the description. 
refer to the PDFs for a complete list of prompts for each. In Dorico, select a bar and type Shift K, and you are presented with a popover. If you want E flat major, type capital E and a lowercase b. For E flat minor, lowercase e and lowercase b. Or you can type in the number of sharps or flats. For clefs in Dorico, it's Shift C. Now you just need to know what to type in. For treble clef, it's G. For bass clef, it's F. For time signatures in Dorico, think meters, for the popover is Shift M. And it's very straight ahead 3 slash 4 for 3 4, C for common, cut for cut time. For bar lines in Dorico, the popover is Shift B. For the double bar, type two vertical slashes. For the left repeat, it's vertical slash and colon. For the right repeat, it's colon and vertical slash. Notice that you can call up any of these popovers by going to the right menu, or skip the popover and use the right zone. Just like in Sibelius, you can create custom keyboard shortcuts in Dorico. Go to the Dorico menu, Preferences, Key Commands. Now let's say I want to add a key command to filter dynamics. In the search bar, I start to type Dynamics. Press my keyboard shortcut, click Add Key Command. Don't forget this last step. Click Apply at the bottom. Now back to my score, I can select a region of bars, press my key command, and the dynamics are filtered. So to review, for step input, the process in Dorico is very similar to Sibelius once we change some geography. The way to speed up your workflow in any software is to learn the key commands. In Dorico, many of these involve a popover which use the shift key in conjunction with a letter key. In the next video, we'll explore text in Dorico.